So just as a reminder, we have our scale at the back of the room. If you want to have your BMI checked, um, please uh, don't feel afraid. Just go ahead and have it checked. It's an important marker for your health. So it's good to know it. And then, of course, we have our panelists here who will tell you why your BMI is important for you to know. So this evening, we are going to be talking about from pounds to prevention. And our panelists this evening are Dr. Shukina. We have Dr. Sule. We have George Fahim and Maureen Waititu. And we are going to start with Dr. Shukina. She is the co-founder and director of Nairobi Bariatric Center, a family physician and psychologist who has specialized in obesity treatment, especially in the field of psychotherapy for correction of eating habits, which she has practiced for more than 25 years. Some of you are just as old as her practice. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Shikina to come and speak to us this afternoon. Thank you, Eva, for beautiful introduction. Hello, everyone. It's uh, really nice to see all of you. Welcome to Nairobi Bariatric Center. So, as Eva already mentioned, I am Dr. Shukina, uh, director of Nairobi Bariatric Center. And the um, main, uh, main aim of our meeting today for you to get over this myth about weight loss treatment. There are so many different methods, different propositions, different ideas about that how to lose weight. Human population is fighting extra weight for more than thousand years. So this is this is problem not only uh, this time when we are here. This problem is known for many years and that is why we have so many different ideas, different propositions. But unfortunately fighting obesity and overweight was not successful. Many of you tried to lose weight. And you can see where it led. People are losing weight and gaining weight back um, using different methods. And we know people are using dieting, exercises, food supplements. Uh, and uh, still not succeeding. So about 50 years ago, already doctors stepped in. And doctors' uh, concern was that uh, obesity is leading to different diseases. That is where obesity uh, became a field of uh, medicine. Because before it was just, uh, uh, just we can say, just uh, like jokali methods. People may say, stop eating. You can hear about that, how to treat obesity while just... Uh, uh, standing and waiting for the bus or in the bus driving and people are just discussing and just stop eating, do exercises, all that. So obesity is leading to more than 64 different diseases. That is the statement of WHO. So beginning of Nairobi Bariatric Center was that time when we became to know about successful weight loss treatment, when we discovered effective weight loss treatment. I'm not talking about new weight loss treatment, I'm talking about really effective weight loss treatment. It was 27 years ago. Before that, I was interested in weight loss myself and tried diet and exercises, uh, medications. Already when I was a doctor, I tried food supplements and uh, uh, different medications which are suppressing appetite and I've seen it's not effective. So I lost interest in uh, weight loss and lost even hope that I can succeed. So 27 uh, years ago, we discovered new method of treatment, uh, which is um, focusing on uh, patient eating habit and it's it was 
really big discovery and uh, uh, been interested in psychotherapy for many years, even when I was a student. So I've seen it has a very strong approach and it has a logical approach. Um, we started using psychotherapy in our clinic. While practicing psychotherapy for eating habit correction, uh, I got a lot of very good results. People were losing weight, 10, 20, 40, 50, 60 kilograms. But uh, while going on with, uh, with the psychotherapy as a main method, I've seen that patients are not, not all patients are responding uh, equally. Some people are losing weight very well, but those people who have more extra weight, it's becoming more difficult. So is that what made us to think about introducing other methods of treatment like bariatric procedure? Uh, so, and that is where we are now. Um, in our treatment, we use psychotherapy for eating habit correction and we use bariatric procedures. Uh, from the beginning, our name was Holistic Living Farm. Why Holistic Living Farm? Because uh, we are approaching uh, obesity as a complication of eating habit and habit it is related to our mind so this is problem which is uh, connected to our body mind and spirit so that is the approach only this approach can give us success so we were keeping holistic living fun for many many years and uh, we were advised by later on by our colleagues and doctors and friends and they were saying this holistic, it looks like not medical. And that time we already were using surgery and uh, uh, gastric balloons. I was really resistant to call this therapy, uh, I mean, uh, to change name for our clinic. But um, we decided to, to change our name to Nairobi Bariatric Center. So story of Nairobi Bariatric Center and our history is already in Kenya for 27 years. Uh, so, <clears throat> now, let's talk more about weight loss treatment. When I have patient in my clinic for consultation, like first time patient is coming to, for consultation, uh, first what I have to check patients weight and patient's uh, medical condition. So according to patient's uh, condition, we are deciding what type of treatment to be used. Uh, often people know already what tactic of treatment, what type of treatment they want to use. Many people don't know. Many people are saying that they want to have balloon. Other people say they want to have bypass or surgery, or some people are saying they want to have psychotherapy. People have different uh, body mass index. So, if we are looking at body mass index into relationship to weight loss treatment, if patient have um, body mass index 27 and above, patient can, have, can be qualified for gastric balloon. So, what is body mass index? This is your weight divided by uh, height in meter square. Our habit is influenced by our mother, our family, our teachers in nursery, all society, school, advertisements now all environment is influencing on our eating habit. And you can see in which environment we live now. All, everything is about food. And um, so, that is uh, why to deal with eating habit, we need to work with psychotherapy. And this is that initial method which we discovered 27 years ago. Uh, so psychotherapy for eating habit correction, it is must. Psychotherapy will help you to relearn that bad habit which you learn and to relearn that program which is in your 
subconscious mind. It's like encrypted in your subconscious mind. It's like a computer, programmed computer. Once you learn something, you follow it. And you very often you can notice that you are eating even without recognizing, like automatically. And like um, you have overeating reaction or stress. When you re-eat, you eat what Not only you, me too. <laughs> All of us like this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that is why we need to work with psychotherapy. How long to go to do we need to change habit? Next question. How long do you need to change uh, a habit of taking alcohol? That's the common problem which we have in our society. The same drugs, the, this is a uh, substance. The same smoking. Uh, so how long do we need for the person to stop taking alcohol? How many days? How many months? Any? Three? Christian said three. Three days, uh -huh, three months. Uh -huh. <laughs> Any, any other idea? Habit, habit, habit. We are talking about habit. How many? 66. Uh -huh. Any other thoughts? Already some, uh, someone said 21 day, yes. I hear about it often. Yeah. Any anyone? Okay. Do you think in three months all alcohol addicted people stop taking alcohol? 45 days. You can see what's happening. People go to a rehabilitation center 45 days or 41 day. Coming out of rehabilitation center, relapse. Is it not the same what is happening with uh, weight loss treatment? You are dieting, dieting, you are losing weight. Bam! You started gaining weight back. So, studies are showing, you see, sometimes all, all life is not enough for people to win this bad habit. Not all alcohol addicted, drug addicted, uh, the cigarette addicted people will even win this habit. And there are some studies uh, that um, psychotherapy for eating habit, particularly for eating habit correction, uh, need to be um, taken by the patient up to two years. Okay. I must tell you, depend on uh, type of psychotherapy, depend on type of treatment which is used. We use psychotherapy, which was developed by doctors, medical doctors, and psychologists together with psychiatrists. So you can see uh, doctors came together with psychologists. So according to the research and according to the <coughs> uh, proposal of the doctors who are using uh, this uh, psychotherapy for eating habit correction, it's so-called high-intensity psychotherapy for obesity treatment according to the to this therapy, you should go through psychotherapy for nine months. Three months, not enough. I'm practicing psychotherapy for all these 27 years. It was first my method, which I started practicing. Three months, not yet. Three months, we are just getting feeling about um, that what is, uh, what direction we need to take in the in, changes in your eating habit. Six months, we are getting already stronger. Nine months, most patients who are using psychotherapy have very, very high chance to what to do to change eating habit. It's only about eating habit. Why we need to change this eating habit? Because that habit which you have, which brought patient to extra weight, it was not good. It was not right. Because if you would have right eating habit, you would not gain all that weight. 
And uh, by the way, you were not born with this. You have habit. You were born free. You were born normal, healthy baby. This bad wrong habit was introduced to you by society, by family, by environment. Uh, so it is. Um, we need to relearn that and to introduce to our patients new, new healthy, sustainable, enjoyable eating style. So nine months, I must tell three months not enough, uh, six months for some people, and nine months psychotherapy. So what do we do in psychotherapy? Let's make it uh, not too long. In psychotherapy, we uh, what scientists. Uh, develop this tactic of treatment. That's what psychologists are giving us the tools. It's very simple. People may think it's habit. It's uh, so difficult to deal with. It's appearing not difficult. Only three tools you need to use. Tool number one, keeping food diary. Where you are weighing your food and you are recording everything what you eat. So when you are doing that, you are imagining how many calories in different types of food and uh, in different volumes. You can imagine how many types of food we have. If our ancestors were eating uh, berries, um, uh, nuts and meat, about 2000 years ago. Now look amount of food which we eat. To understand what what and how much to eat, you really need to understand what is in that food. So keeping food diary will allow you to understand that. Number two, people should listen to audio sessions. We are giving patients audio sessions, like mindfulness session, and people are listening to it up to nine months. Once a day, up to nine months. Why nine, nine months? This be because it is we are working on the habit. Uh, all those psychotherapeutic sessions are based on different psychotherapeutic techniques like neurolinguistic programming, persuasion and encoding, psychosynthesis, psychoanalysis. Uh, we have tranquilizing session. <clears throat> so I must say all knowledge, all theories known to the modern science are implemented in this psychotherapy to help patient to change eating habit. That is why we are achieving quite quick result. And number three, um, uh, we have uh, group therapy sessions. Once a week, up to nine months. Um, so these three, three tools which are supposed to be practiced. It is all is easy. Listening to audio sessions, it's simple once a day at home, up to nine months. Attending group therapy session, it is beautiful group of ladies, sometimes men is also coming. Beautiful group meeting together and uh, we, are, we have a psychoeducational material and also patients are sharing their experience, difficulties. Uh, and uh, people like learning from each other very powerful approach. Uh, so, in first three months, we have like introduction course, first three months introduction course. We have psychoeducational material and also we go through psychotherapeutic, uh, uh, different psychotherapeutic techniques. Second three months, you can say now six months, we have intermediate course, where we are going more deep into the resistant factors to what to eat and habit and uh, last three months like uh, month seven eight nine it is advanced course after patient already became to know all um, uh, all resistant factors after patient already mastered all audio sessions uh, in the in this last advanced course uh, we are focusing on one, like every session, one individual case. So we put patient on the hot seat and we are practically analyzing this particular patient. So we are creating that condition where patient have no another way 
just to adopt to healthy, comfortable, happy eating habit without having any more obsessive thoughts about food, without, I mean, easily to overcome temptation, uh, the stress eating. So that's the approach. So psychotherapy is must. Because to change habit, you, that's why I'm talking a lot about it, because to change habit is as difficult as to change any other bad habit. And that is why we can see that even after bariatric surgery, even after balloon, people are often gaining weight. Or people are having very big, even if they are maintaining it, they have very big difficulties to maintain. Because all the time, all those obsessive thoughts, uh, temptation, uh, eating, vomiting. Why people are doing Why it is happening? Uh, because uh, mind is resisting. So this is about psychotherapy. <coughs> well, you see, in, uh, in addition to um, uh, psychological encouragement for overeating, we have also... We have another factor, very strong factors which are um, driving patients' eating habit. This is related to uh, feeling of hunger. Feeling of hunger is a strong, uh, strong driver of uh, patients' eating habits. So, um, and when patient has, when patient is hungry, you will eat. Mandazi on the road, is it? When you are hungry, me too. So that is uh, that is the idea of the doctors. Okay, uh, idea is that that if we can um, reduce volume of the stomach, we will give patients feeling of satiety. So then patient does not feel hungry. So patient eats small amount of food and you are not feeling hungry. So now we have two types of different uh, bariatric procedure. We have gastric balloon and we have uh, uh, bariatric surgery. Gastric balloon is a temporal procedure and uh, bariatric surgery is a permanent procedure. So aim of gastric balloon and aim of surgery is just the same, the same. I just want to stop it and it's not stopping. <laughs> so aim of bariatric procedure to reduce volume of the stomach and to prevent patient from feeling of hunger. So we can see into addition to the feeling of hunger, we have also very strong encouragement for overeating being driven by patient's uh, habit. So from this, we can make a conclusion. Two methods of treatment are supposed to be used, psychotherapeutic and bariatric. Two methods which are influencing on patients' eating habits. So when you are thinking about weight loss treatment, of any, any method which will be proposed uh, by anyone, first of all, think, is it going to work on my eating habit and how it is going to help? To, for me to achieve sustainable eating habit. If you are dieting, if you are dieting, is it going to change your eating habit? Of course not. Why? Because you it is forceful restriction. You are not changing your mindset about food. If you are taking medications, is medication going to change your eating habit? Of course not. So Maybe we can talk a, a little bit more about gastric balloon. Patients are interested, what is that gastric balloon and how is it inserted? So, gastric balloon is indicated from BMI 27. We are placing gastric balloon into the stomach. You can see balloon is taking space of the stomach and then you eat smaller amount of food and you are not hungry. So, the, and then after six months, we are removing gastric balloon. Another procedure, which is more permanent procedure, gastric sleeve. We do quite uh, a lot of those procedures, a lot. Just recently, 18 on and 19th February, we had uh, bariatric surgery days. So, it's procedure of reducing size of the stomach. So, I can just simply, I'm explaining to the patient, 
that we are making your stomach the way how it would be when you are in your BMI 20, 23. Yeah, so you're just having a small stomach and you're eating a more, uh, small amount of food and you are not hungry. Another procedure, gastric bypass, which also we do a lot. We are reducing size of the stomach and we are connecting small intestine to the small stomach. So here we have a restriction and um, also absorption is reduced on one and a half, like food is bypassing one and a half meter of the digestive system. So this is psychotherapy, that's they put uh, our video with Willis. Yeah, so sometimes people ask, so what is more important? Is it psychotherapy or it is gastric balloon or, or surgery? All, all is important. Can we do only psychotherapy without uh, bariatric procedure? Very difficult. What, what, what I noticed that uh, people who have uh, morbid obesity and going through psychotherapy, uh, they have very high chance of relapsing because, because of um, resistant factors. Resistant factor, resistance to what? Some people are saying, oh, my body is resisting to weight loss. No, resistance to changes in your eating habit. Uh, so that is why uh, um, really combination of bariatric procedure and psychotherapy can give us the most successful result. Balloon, when do we do balloon? When we do uh, bariatric surgery. Balloon we do from BMI 27, when we have a smaller body mass index. If patient has morbid obesity, uh, we can still do gastric balloon, or we can consider immediately to go for bariatric surgery. Again, it can be another question. Can we have bariatric surgery without psychotherapy? What do you think? Anyone can comment on that? You think, yeah, that's true. Because what is happening also, after gastric balloon, and after bariatric surgery, people are losing weight. And later on, after one ma one year, two years, five years, three years, ten years, people are gaining weight. Recently, I was attending a bariatric conference in Cairo, where surgeons all over the from all over the world came coming together and discussing particularly bariatric surgery and their challenges in bariatric surgery. So, main topic of discussion was and main concern was about weight regaining after bariatric surgery. So you can see people are not only after gastric balloon gaining weight. People who are, who are going through bariatric surgery, also they are gaining weight. After five years, ten years, weight regaining is quite high. So then now question, why people are regaining weight? Maybe we can have a little bit discussion on that. And then all, all those knowledge, feelings, all memory about that eating habit will stay creeping on and making people to eat more. So, maybe we have any question. So here we are with our surgeon, Dr. Noel, and then uh, here, we, this is our um, surgery, that's how surgeries are going on. Mostly we do sleep bypass, mini bypass. Mm, uh, here is uh, like two years ago, forum what women want. Mm, we do bowel irrigation procedure, maybe we'll talk about it later. And uh, what we have here. This is our anesthesiologist. Let me introduce you our team, our anesthesiologist. Uh, here is Jerry, our dietitian. Here we have uh, Rebecca, our, our manager. Eva, Eva is here. Eva, Monica, Monica is not here, uh -huh. 
And we have Victoria. <laughs> yeah. So let me see what else we have. Yeah. And here we have our patients. Mm. Beautiful.